let me give you my take on the gall reading. Yeah, we've been using this article for a, a long time, almost from the very beginning of the studio. This has just been one of those articles that has resonated with people over the years. It's it's a very um, short, written in a very you know conversational, personal style, and it just has so many nice design ideas and principles that I think are so relevant and, and, and practical, really, when you come right down to it, that uh, we've continued to use it. So, footholds on design, using a metaphor of rock climbing. Interestingly, I've never rock climbed, and I understood the article, I understood the metaphor pretty well. It's, it's always a risky thing to use a metaphor. Uh, if nobody has ever rock climbed before, it, would they understand what we're talking about? But it seemed to make sense to me. So the rock climbing metaphor of a, a clear goal when you're designing a project, like r climbing a mountain, get to the top. It's a difficult task. And this idea of, of footholds, is an interesting one. So I only can imagine that when you're climbing the rock that there's a place where you really do have a good foothold, a place of stability, as, as the article says, moments of safety and stability. So you have to think about where you're going from there, but that one point is a great location to stop, catch your breath, and kind of take stock of you know where I've been and where I'm going. And uh, there's a quote coming up it gets at this next one that I really like, but this, it, you know, the sum of all the steps taken so far and a point of departure for the rest of the journey. What a cool idea that when you get to that, that foothold, it is the sum of everywhere else you've been and it's a point of departure for the rest of the journey. And it's a place for decision making. So yes, the this this quote I just think is, is just so cool because I, I, again, the, the metaphor of, of uh, f for doing software design, I get you get to those points where I've 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 made some design, uh, uh, you know, uh, successes. Uh, I, I've made some breakthroughs. Now what? You know, where am I going now? So each foothold is both an endpoint that sums all the steps she has taken so far and a point of departure from which to plan the next one. So, yeah. So facilitating footholds in software design. So sometimes what and there's a, there's a variety of ways of doing this. So I used to use the revert tool or option in, in a software tool where I would do a lot, I would save, and then I'd kind of move forward a bit. And if I made any big mistakes before I would save again, I could always revert to the last saved version. You know, it's something you can do, but you only can do it and really, you're just going out on a little bit of a limb. What I like to do in particular, to me, this is where I'm very careful, is I make a copy of the project right before trying something daring. I actually get out of the tool, make a copy of my, my, uh, my file, and start using the, the copy. So I always keep the last version where things were working up to a point really well. I keep that off to the side. And uh, I, again, I keep a number of all copies. I'll show you on the next slide. I keep very meticulous notes, by the way, too. I keep a design journal. It's almost like a captain's log, I would say, where what was I doing in this particular version? And so I know that you know, even a week's, in a week or a month from now, I can say, well, where, where was the point where I, I, I took this, this, this route? Because maybe that design route after a week or two isn't working out. In a course like this, that would be more like in a, in a few days because we're working pretty intensely. I could always, again, go back to, to that earlier version to say, let me go in a different direction. And uh, let me show you an example from a recent project. This is a project that I've been working on with, with some faculty over in agricultural education. We're trying to help new ag ed teachers learn how to get the community involved at their in their schools. So uh, here you see the, uh, the projects. And... Uh, I, these are all uh, separate files using a tool called Live Code, and what I've done is you can see, starting with version 1.0, I would then copy the file as I would make a, a you know a, a, a new change or go to a new direction. But it's, there could be some very small changes going from you know one zero one 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 two. And at a certain point, I made a pretty big change, so I numbered it from two, starting at two, working my way up. So you can kind of see here, even on some days, I was really uh, flying close to the sun, I suppose, and I was making some changes that uh, I wanted to, uh, I was not, probably not very sure of if they were going to work. 
so I, I made some uh, different versions uh, in, in, the, uh, in the morning of the very same day. And as you can see, we're now working on version 3.1.2. So it's just my little way to make sure that I always have uh, a way to, again, revert or go back to a project version that was working at least up to a certain point, again, as I documented that in my, uh, in my design journal. And of course, I'm always backing up as I go along uh, and not just backing up the files, but backing up the entire computer. Let's talk about backing up. This is actually on the syllabus. It's a good quote. Be sure to back up your project frequently. The most experienced software designers expect their hard drives to crash tomorrow. So they take all the necessary precautions today. Let me tell you, if you've never had your hard drive crash, then you're probably living dangerously because once it happens, it kind of changes your perspective on things. We, we tend to think of computer software and computers as being really robust and they never break. Well, if you've ever had a, a hardware crash, as I have, you get that silly thought out of your mind right away. You're always kind of praying and crossing your fingers that even a new computer is going to make it another day. So one of the most important principles to backing up is to be sure that you are backing up your project to a hard drive external to the computer on which you are doing your project work. Simply making a copy of your project on your computer is not sufficient. If your hard drive crashes, you may not be able to recover any files from it. So I have a Mac, a MacBook Pro, and I have, uh, well, it comes with Time Machine. I have an uh, external hard drive both at home and at my office. I always back up as the first thing I do when I start the work in the morning and then when I go to my office in the afternoon. I also you know, use other places to save things as well. If it's a really, 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 really important file, I'll, I'll make another backup at certain points on a little thumb drive. I also will use Google Drive to make some copies of important important files as well. So you can get a little maybe obsessive compulsive over this, but once you've lost something, you'll develop those uh, OC uh, tendencies, I assure you. All right, anyhow, let's move on. So the other nice thing I like about the, uh, the Gall article, it talks about design styles and two distinct ones are a top-down approach versus a bottom-up. And just to cut to the, to the chase here, I think it's really good to explore both in this particular course. A top-down plan is, yeah, you generate a master plan first, then do the programming. This is sort of what all the instructional design literature would have you believe that you do all your design work first before you start doing any development. As contrasted with a bottom-up, which is a little bit more, you might say, artistic or you know a little more shooting from the hip, this idea of just you have a general goal and you, you start work, you start building, you start programming or whatever it might be, and you let the plan evolve as the, the prototype gets built. Uh, it's not in the article, but there's uh, a very influential person, uh, at least in my life, Seymour Papert, who died a few years ago. He had this concept of a bricolore, a, a French word. It really means tinkerer, that you're kind of tinkering with something. You don't really necessarily, I'm going to plan everything out you know, step by step. You just kind of get in there and you kind of mess around. And there are advantages and disadvantages to each approach. I mean, a pure top-down um, you're going to be very regimented. You're going to perhaps be somewhat inflexible, and you're going to go down one and one only path. Bottom up only can be kind of well, can be a little loosey goosey, a little, uh, you know, it, it can go in all kind of directions, kind of like spaghetti, and you can go, and you can have a lot of false starts. Uh, I think the two go hand in hand, and this really is a personal choice, by the way. There's not a right answer. Uh, you might waste a lot of time bottom up, but ultimately come to a very creative design. Um, top down, you might think you're doing it in a hurry only to finish a project and realize, boy, this was uninspiring. I, I better do it over. So ultimately, they might take the same amount of time uh, to get to a really good, a good, a good product. But I do think there's a personal kind of, uh, 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 you know, personality trait here that, uh, that kind of goes with it. So think about this, and again, I hope you use this course as a place to try it out. Now, in the in the article, we had this student Ray who's building a bridge, and he used a a tool called Growl Tiger, which I have no idea exactly what it is. I'm sure it doesn't even exist anymore. It's 20 years ago. But you know, again, the it's analogous to the idea of how 
considering how tools help or maybe even hinder our design efforts. Uh, and here are some, of course, the tools that, that uh, we've been at least talking about in the course so far, Storyline being the main one. But uh, it has competitors. Uh, Adobe Captivate is one. We've been talking about some graphics tools like uh, Photoshop. I've mentioned at least uh, live code. And uh, so it's interesting to see how these tools help or hinder. So um, it, what's, what's interesting is that, well, let me just read this quote. A significant challenge exists for software designers. They need to, cre to create tools that assist designers to reflect on past steps and to inform plans for the next foothold while allowing for the designer's creativity to emerge and to be tested in an intentional way. And this is where you have to be honest or true to yourself. The tool, if you don't know it very well, I think can also stifle creativity because you're spending so much of your cognitive power on, you know, where, what key do I press to, to, to get this function to work? At some point, though, when you start to get really comfortable with, with a tool, then you almost, well, to me, I, I like to... Th to get to a point where I start to think in the tool. I start to have the tools, how it's, how it's grouped, how the tools are put together, you know, the options, and how it actually works as a way to conceive of my design project. That's a wonderful place to be, and I can just jump into the tool and begin you know, um, doing that bottom-up design. If you're not there yet, if, you, if the tool is kind of getting in the way, then you have to be mindful of that think about design separately from the tool and then try to bring that design to life in the tool itself. Uh, perhaps using another tool like PowerPoint or, or, or Word or some other you know, sketching type program to, to kind of say, what do I want this thing to do? So that's an interesting um, dilemma you can find yourself in. Sometimes a tool can be a place where you can be creative while building something and sometimes it can be a hindrance. Kind of like, to me, writing. Do you go to a word processor right away when you have a paper to write, or do you prefer to write it out on a, on a legal pad? Uh, if, you, if you know how the tool works really well, I'm sure you do, a word processor, my guess is you can, you can be creative in your writing. You can really focus on the ideas and not be um, consumed with what keys to press. So you want to let your brain kind of work in a very, you know, optimal way for what is the main task at hand. And if you're getting distracted by the tool, then you need to pull back and say, I'm not ready to do that kind of design work with the tool yet. Let me um, uh, do design work separately and then come back to the tool. But hopefully at some point, you'll get to that point where you are um, thinking in, you know, you're thinking with the tool. Finally, uh, there's, there's something to be said about the, the chapter, uh, golf chapter as well, because it, it gives us an idea of, you know, Ray keeping a journal and trying to tell the story of the design idea, uh, really, you know, warts and all. So we really uh, need you to take that to heart, that the design journal is not meant to be something that's going to be a polished uh, success at the end and look what great thing I did but instead tell us a story and it can be one where there are a lot of uh, struggles and a lot of tensions and stress that you know should come out in your design journal as it relates to your design yeah and so there were you know um, lessons that were in uh, Ray's journal that the, the the bridge does not uh, work and to me, the, analog the analogous situation is, boy, I wish, you know, uh, evaluation could be that simple or clear cut, like the bridge didn't work, it, it collapsed. My instruction didn't work, you know, it collapsed. Well, how do you know when your instruction or your design uh, isn't working very well? It's sometimes very hard to know. And, and actually, until you try it out with people that it's intended for, you probably don't have any good clue of whether or not it's working. You may be in a bit of a state of ignorance of, isn't this wonderful? The people I'm designing it for are just going to love it. Well, until you actually try it out, you really don't know. And um, I have kept my own design journal over the years in different projects. This is one I kept a long time ago when we first did the studio. Uh, I did a uh, making of Noah Road the Game. It was uh, all about a meek, mild uh, professor type who uh, bicycles to work uh, every day and you can see my definition there of what a uh, to be what a bicycle is all about I still do try to ride my bike to work uh, occasionally 
Okay, and really this is the last slide. Uh, you know, what is design? And it's an interesting word. It's both, a, it can be a noun and a verb, depending on the context, obviously. So, so what is it? Some of the conclusions, well, design is what we should be about, not about storyline, not about live code. It is about the design of a, an idea that we have we want, that is going to express ourselves, maybe be something that helps somebody out, out in some particular way. Design is aesthetic. And we're going to be reading an article by uh, Patrick Parrish about that word. It's not just about pretty pictures. It's about the learner experience. And that's a very subjective thing. What experiences am I giving a learner or, or person who's going through my, my software? Design is functional. It has to do something. It's, it's not just art, you know. Art can be a pure expression, but if you're designing something, it's going to do something. Design is organizing. Design is imitation. That's an interesting word. Uh, many times we start off with, with, you know, what have others done? Sometimes the even artists will go to uh, the Louvre and and uh, uh, the MoMA uh, Museum of Modern Art in, in in New York, and they'll they'll simply try to recreate a, a famous work, trying to understand what ha what what is good, you know, good art. Well, what is good design? Sometimes you do try to imitate, and it's a, it's a good idea that that really worked well um, in this particular case. Maybe I can learn some things from that. Design is transcending going beyond and I, I really do want you to think about this word design and what kind of a personal uh, meaning you would attach to it at some point soon I'd like to have a little activity associated with that okay well with that I am done thank you for watching